Next up is Fraser Bird. There's your slide. There's the time. We have archives of meteorological data going back 100 years or more. In some cases, these can be continuous daily observations of things like temperature and precipitation, and the wealth of information we get from these are invaluable to climate scientists around the world. It's from these data that we first realized our planet is steadily warming. But the problem with observational records are that they tend to be restrictive in two ways. So they're not evenly distributed around the planet, and 100 years of observations is not really a long time to be observing the climate system. Major climatic fluctuations happen on thousands to hundreds of thousands of year timescales. So recorded meteorological data from a few isolated sites doesn't tell us that much about the system as a whole. If we truly want to learn how climate works, then we need more records from around the planet, but we also need longer records that go back several thousand years. My PhD is centered on this need for long-term climate records, particularly in Andean and South America. I've been using the remains of aquatic insects preserved in lake sediments to reconstruct climate change since the last glacial maximum about 20,000 years ago. The group of insects I use are called chronomids, or non-biting midges. They live in lakes, and they have a life cycle strongly controlled by temperature. What's even more interesting is that the many different species of midge can all tolerate different temperature regimes, and it's this feature that we can begin to exploit. So by sampling the many different habitats across the Andes where these different insects live, I was able to build what's called a temperature inference model. Basically, all this model does is describe the probability of a species occurring over a given environmental gradient. Now, those same insects that you find in the modern lakes of the Andes also preserve really well in the older, deeper sediments of lakes that are slowly accumulating through time. As climate changes around the lake, so too do the conditions within the lake, and so different species of chronomid occupy that lake based on their tolerances. Over time, each layer of sediment becomes a snapshot of the world at the time that it was deposited. And so based on the fossil assemblage of insects that we find in any given sample, and the model that we've built, we can estimate what the temperature must have been like at the time that a particular group of insects lived. Using this method, I've now reconstructed um, temperature changes from a site in the, in the Bolivian Andes called Comacocha. The lake is 18,000 years old. Using the chronomids preserved within those sediments, we now know what the temperature was like at every period in time in this lake's history. But more than that, we can now begin to investigate the patterns and rates of those temperature changes. Using this model, we can now generate high-resolution quantitative data from lake sediments right across the Andes and begin to learn more about long-term climate change in tropical South America. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Fraser. Questions? At the back again. Okay. What's the time resolution do you think you can get? Um, it really depends on the site that we were studying. So if we find a laminated site, these insects live on annual life cycles. So in theory, we could reconstruct temperatures every year for as long as the record is. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.